Quick heads up for those who prefer to buy these sort of games in a full season, I will be doing a separate full season review after season 1 concludes. This is Blues and Bullets, Episode 1. Blues and Bullets is the rare sort of indie production that has a high level of polish, unique ideas, and a fair price point all rolled up into one package. While A Crowd of Monsters' first episode is only about an hour or so long, it remains consistently enjoyable throughout and offers more gameplay variety than Telltale's own adventure games. On top of the traditional point-and-click gameplay, third-person shooting and actual crime scene investigation go on as well, deepening the gameplay and making it feel more distinctive. What further sells Blues and Bullets as being more than a mere copy of Telltale's formula is the emphasis on unpredictability. Not only is the plot a mystery thriller, but there's a fair amount of flashbacks and flash forwards that offer interesting ways to push you into moral decisions. Granted, this also has the problem of making some decisions invalidated beyond changing the context of a scene. Now, I am willing to give some leeway for the first episode of a series, but I'm hoping A Crowd of Monsters has more meaningful plot choices down the road. It's hard to talk about the game's story without really spoiling everything, because even the game's opening minutes are very critical. You play, primarily, as Elliot Ness, former leader of the Untouchables who has now retired and is running a diner. He's also voiced by the same actor who played Geralt in the Witcher trilogy. Elliot is called upon by Al Capone himself to help locate a missing person, a case that leads Elliot down into a greater conspiracy at large. The entire world is set in an alternate history timeline where the Hindenburg never exploded and there are dark secret societies at work. What's refreshing about all this is that the game doesn't lean too heavily on these elements, but instead simply makes them part of its world. You are accompanied in the first episode by Milton, a former convict who likes cooking and the game vaguely hints might actually be homosexual. What works so well about Milton is that it isn't made a big deal. Instead, it's just like, yeah, he might be. And you know what? He actually has a personality and we're not going to make him a caricature. He's going to just be a person. And that is incredibly refreshing. And the dialogue is really at its best when Elliot and Milton are at work on the investigation, tossing jabs and making jokes. What really sells the characters is their performances, which are incredible because occasionally a really awkward line might pop up, but they'll deliver it with damn good skill. Except for the potential love interest, who just falls flat in her interactions with Elliot, and I'm actually really hoping she doesn't become a big part of the story because she just was the most awkward part out of the entire episode. The game also does a great job of surprising you with a joke or a really horrific scene when you least expect it, and in the latter case, I mean, this is really hardcore, unsettling imagery. Some of the murders in Silent Hill seem tame by comparison to the killing in Episode 1 of Blues and Bullets. This game is not afraid to go to dark places, and if you have a problem with gore, you might want to stay away. I'm still not entirely sure if it was done purely for shock value, or to fit with the urban fantasy theme the plot's going with, but for now, I'm honestly okay with it because they're handling the more violent moments with a nice touch of unsettling. It feels more along the lines of an intentional, well-measured amount of violence and gore rather than an excessive amount like, say, in Resident Evil. While the hour and a half length is woefully short, I can't deny that Blues and Bullets does its best to make up for the short length with some solid quality. It's a highly linear and scripted affair, but lets its core gameplay shine instead of trying to make it fit in a specific framework. The sheer willingness to try new things and push the boundaries of episode of gaming is something the adventure genre has needed for a while now since Telltale Guy has started again. Everything fits cohesively and makes sense. It all just links together and feels, and I usually hate saying this word, but it genuinely feels cinematic in that it feels like it has the right kind of pacing like a film would. It understands entirely how every single element needs to go together. No particular decision is made to just fit a certain way. It's all done in service of itself while still being an approachable and enjoyable game. And it does it well. Which is why Blues and Bullets Episode 1 gets an 8 out of 10. Keep them coming, boys. I'm definitely ready for more. Hey everybody, quick heads up, The Witcher 3 review is now up, 
but currently it's only in written form. I'm afraid the video production side of things is taking a little bit longer than I'd like, so the written version is up on Gamescape right now where you can read it. If at all possible, I will still have a video review, but for right now, if you want my opinion, be sure to click ahead. And you might want to, because I gave it a 6 out of 10, and trust me, there's some very important reasons as to why. Additionally, I will be doing some follow-up articles in the future, after my reviews. I've got a piece coming up on Blues and Bullets, and I will have further pieces based upon the other games that I'm reviewing. I'll be sure to include a link right at the end of each video. Cheers, and thanks for watching. This is Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. Bring your minigun so that you Bring can. Bring minigun to the beach? Yeah, you go bodyboarding and then you come back in and you're like, oh, there's the enemy, let me grab my minigun. And we're ready. about to go into more buildings. And we're going and to go inside lots of great buildings. Use our bullets to negotiate. Oh, good, they're already shooting. It's like House of Cards with guns. It's, yeah. I'll be Frank Underwood and then we'll just make this work. Well, if any trains get nearby, I am not Zoe Barnes. Now, now, you know that Zoe is my most true ally. Oh god, they're throwing grenades. Yeah, and you've kept a very open thing with the community. You've shown a full content roadmap that everybody can see, and you've explained your plans for the game. How has the response been to that, and to the current build of the game that's out right now in the public? Um, well, I'll take the second question first. So the, the response to the build and the game that's out there, the early access version that's out there now, has been really positive. We're, we're hovering around 90% positive Steam reviews, which we're really pleased with. And um, it really inspires us to keep making those features and, and keep making things better. Um, the open development policy has been something that we've embraced throughout the entire span of our development. We, we used to stream the game, play test of the game, really, really early. Even when it was first person, we had some streams from way back when.